Hello and welcome to another vlog of my writing journey that we've decided to call it for the moment. Who knows that that could all change. Uh, here we are. I've got my cup of tea with a different mug in case you're worried. This is a Star Trek mug. It's uh, life but not as we know it. Uh, very good. Star Trek obviously superior science fiction. The original cast on there. Um, you know we won't, we won't get into that argument but yeah it just is isn't it. It's just better. Mm, and today's tea is Earl Grey, which of course would be drunk hot. I don't know why Jean-Luc Picard always felt he had to specify that. If there's someone who likes to drink their Earl Grey cold, then please, you know, let him. Please report the or report yourself to the authorities and have yourself looked at because that's a very strange thing to do. Although you can make ice cream out of it, and it, that's quite nice, I believe, Earl, Earl Grey ice cream, and you can put it in cakes and all kinds of things. So who knows? Who knows? Um. I think possibly that the, some American writer somewhere who possibly knew about iced tea decided that um, it would be a good thing if he specified it was hot. Actually, no, not really, because he was supposed to be like French, wasn't he, and, or something. And of course, actually from Yorkshire, Patrick Stewart, hooray, as all the best people are. And, um, and so, yeah, yeah, very badly designed machine. I thought it would have realised by now it would have, you know, knew. If, as soon as he walked up to it, it could have said, so do you want your usual... You know, rather than making him say every time, tea or grey hot, whatever it was he had to say. OK, who knows? Um, there may be a reason in the Starfleet manual for it. Rule 73 stroke B, all drinks must be ordered in full. Um, yeah, so that's the problem with vlogs, isn't it? Because they're kind of um, snippets out of people's lives. You're kind of uh, a little bit unstructured. Um, however... What have I been doing? I think in the last episode I was telling you that I'd almost finished the first draft of the third full-length Darkling Stone novel, and I may have caused some confusion. I know um, one of, <laughs> say, one of my listeners or, or audience uh, of you know all all three of you or whatever <laughs> uh, managed to confuse at least one of you by by muddling up about whether I was going to do this other book or not, and it is a little bit confusing. But um, it's because I kind of forget that I've already done the second novel. Uh, the Trespass is the one that's out. Um, and there's Breaking Ground, a novella that is out. That's the perma-free one you can get in all good online stores. And there's a next one called Outcast, which is a full-length novel. It's actually pretty long. It's quite a lot longer than the uh, Trespass novel. And that's just going through the process. That is out there being... Um, proofread pretty much as we speak today was the day it was meant to be got up by the proofreader so pretty soon that'll be proofread and then that will be out and then there will be three full-length novels and a novella so lots to get your teeth into um, four books in total three full-length novels and after that uh, probably won't be another one um, I kind of don't like it when writers go on for too long I, I sort of felt that about several things in my life you know I mean I used to be a, a big sort of Terry Pratchett fan when they, those were first coming out the Discworld books and after a while you know you sort of go into the shop and think this guy's got his own shelf you know they're, I mean they're, they were great you know and I was privileged to meet him a couple of times and he was a great guy and they, they were good books and um, you know great fun and imaginative not not just sort of silly funny but actually really quite intelligent good comedy and um, but it's got to the point where I thought you know, I'm I'm just paying for his new car here. After there's so many books, I don't know if I want to read anymore. He's he's having an extension bill, or you know, he's buying a bigger house or something, or a horse, or I don't know. You know, you just you kind of feel that after a bit, perhaps. Do you? Or is that just me? Maybe I'm just mean. Um, I felt the same with uh, many years ago. I got into the June books, and there were there were the certain core ones, and there seemed to be some more appeared. And I just thought well, I don't really need to read any more of these. I've already given over too much of my life to reading this I, I don't really need it to be dragged out anymore I would hate people to feel like that so anyway at, at the weekend on Saturday or Sunday was it I can't remember now <laughs> it was anyway at the weekend I finally kind of hit the last full stop and said that's it that's that's finished uh, and it finished in quite a nice neat way which I won't say anything about in case I give anything away and it was kind of like when you finish reading a good book or watching a good film. I, I kind of had a, a happy feeling that I'd done it, but I, there was sort of a sadness 
got a sadness tinge to it because this idea of the darkening stone and the characters in it you know jake and so on all those people that have been with me for a very long time um from the first scribble drafts right through um and again if we're talking about journey here i mean it, i have put up other videos showing you the old quarry i used to play in as a kid and that's kind of some inspiration for it um although the quarry in the books is, is fictional and I think a lot of books have, have that little core of some life experience in them. Perhaps that's what makes them real to the, the reader is because they feel real to the writer. Um, I think it's important to have some kind of sense of authenticity and integrity in your work. That's something I kind of strive for. I don't like to read stuff where that is missing, if you know what I mean. I kind of find that not satisfying. Um, and I kind of had this idea which i don't know if i've explained this before because if you if you've not read them and why not you know what are you doing here um go and, go and read them now breaking grounds free start with that um but the darkening stone is a sort of like a, a bit like a portal but it's through time but it's not the kind of um hollywood sort of people jumping backwards and forwards through time all over the place trying to sort of you know meet their own grandparents or whatever it is that they do or you know invent um penicillin or something or an ipod or whatever in the past it's not kind of like that um it's it's i don't want to go into it in case i spoil anything i'll let you discover it but that's the basics of it so it's you know it's this sort of beautiful slab of perfectly smooth dark stone and the idea is it's existed for a very very long time and so some other story takes place way back neolithic type periods around 3500 BC or BCE if you prefer the before common era notation um, and so it's touched a lot of people's lives backwards and forwards through time so that one of the ideas sort of came to me um, kind of piecemeal really I like the idea of there being this this sort of portal and hidden away somewhere um, in some sort of forgotten place where nobody ever goes I find these places quite kind of intriguing and the quarry referenced or that inspired me is very much like that sort of a forgotten abandoned place very neglected hardly anybody goes there um still to this day nobody really much goes there you sort of see some old beer cans and things so you guess some kids have sloped in there to have a, an illicit drink or whatever but um it's kind of there it's just tucked away it, it's near the town but it's not in the town it's just sort of forgotten and abandoned and the idea that you could have something important somewhere like that where it's could legitimately be undiscovered a lot uh, and to go into that more you'd have to read the books and I, I won't say why um that's important just in case i give anything away um so there was that idea and it's kind of another idea i had that this was kind of in the early days of people having mobile fo phones and i was thinking what if you were going somewhere and the your mobile phone went sort of mad as if somebody was trying to call you or something like that but there was nobody there and it was just sort of it had been activated and somehow this idea came to me altogether that your phone had could be activated by this surge of energy this pulse of energy that's released by some supernatural thing and that it affects mobile phones and send your phone crazy and that's kind of seems a pretty poor starting point for you know three books and a novella but that's that's what it was i'll just be totally honest it was comes from that small thing and i guess little bits come together and it, it went through quite a long journey through a, a handwritten draft in snatched moments of time i was doing a lot of childcare at the time because my my daughter was I think this is when I started, so she was uh, younger than three. So two, in other words, <laughs> do the math, as they say. So she was younger than um, three. She was two, uh, coming up to three, and I was doing the sort of you know stay-at-home dad thing and, and doing all the cooking and cleaning and stuff. And when I could, which isn't much if you've looked after young children, if you get these little snippets of time when. Um, you know the children don't need you um, because somebody else is looking after them or whatever um, I think when she hit three and I, I was able to leave her for 
an hour or so at, at a, a little sort of play group um, unsupervised on the days when it wasn't my turn to help out I would get this bit of time and sort of scribble away furiously and I, I started sort of writing what people call flash fiction now but um, uh, they used to call mini sagas and I started off that writing kind of work little stories in um, 50 words or 100 words kind of got me going sort of built up my confidence to, to tackle a longer piece and off I went uh, with very little planning at that stage just scribbling away in book after book after book I'll get them out another time and show them but a bit of a drag to go and get them out now but um, you might be interested to see all the piles of scribble that went into it and of course you know I, I, I went down rabbit holes and I, I wrote myself into corners and made things very difficult for myself and had to go back and go back and go back and had quite this arty idea at first that I didn't give the main character who's, who was later called Jake um, I didn't give him a name I thought it'd be interesting to go through and not have a name um, bit of a crazy idea really I think it made him quite hard to identify with um, and it's interesting I'll, I'll just throw this in because this is this is something that it's funny because it, I've got a kind of butterfly in mind I read very widely I read all kinds of things and I'm interested in lots of things and it was interesting to me, kept me my interest going in it, in having the different threads in the story, not only in different time zones, but kind of in different styles. So there really is more of a, a, a sort of action element in the brutal Neolithic people having a go at each other, you know, hitting each other with, uh, going each other with flint knives and things. That That's kind of a bit more action adventure sort of a Neolithic adventure. Um, and the sort of uh, the various things the there's kind of a historical element in a more accurate historical element in the ones that go around that like, there's a 1920s thread there's a 1939 thread just on you know on the outset of the war um and then later you know that comes back later during the war there's um one in breaking ground so you see it gets quite hard to keep track of um they, they are more historically accurate and researched i have to research the neolithic stuff as well and then the the Jake threads are a bit more literary fiction and it's quite interesting that my readers if I've got the measure of you the, the ones who sort of say oh yeah we want to read the next one they are quite open-minded and perhaps a bit like me that I think they read quite widely and they are very happy with that they're happy with the jumping backwards and forwards they like that it's almost like a little mental workout you know a little bit of a uh, a mental gymnastic thing go, going backwards and forwards through the time zones keeping track of it all they, they kind of like that kind of thing so yeah, I love that I, I love you know they used to do these episodes of ER I used to love ER and it's there are statistics or something that said ER um, the TV show had it was a hospital TV show in case you didn't watch it for emergency room had more cuts of frames sort of like twice or three times as many as other TV shows or something it was that fast because they were kept moving because it was the nature of emergency and that pace was fantastic and they do these ones that my favorite episodes were ones where it would start at the end and kind of build back up and if you see what I mean so that the opening scenes would actually be the end and then it kind of two days earlier or whatever and all these things would come together and you'd see how it came together and you'd, you'd start to think oh is that going to happen and, oh, no and you guess wrong and they'd, they'd wrong foot you and I love that I love the challenge of it. it kept me very engaged so I think my readers are a bit like that. Um, <clears throat> there are some who kind of look at the cover and they think it deliberately doesn't give away the genre really of the cover because it hasn't really got one genre, it's got several. And there are some people who look at that and see the sort of lightning thing and think, ah, oh, this is like an action adventure. So they like the Neolithic bits and they're okay with the historical parts and they don't like the Jake threads. They, they see him more as a weak character because in an adventure story, fair enough, a young chap called Jake would be hero, uh, hero type he'd be brave resourceful he wouldn't sort of just get beaten up and be upset about it he, but no he's he, he's more like a literary character he's more um, I wanted him to be realistic in truth those of us who most of us go through our lives without having to face violence and when we do witness it, it a few times in my life when I've had to come across things like that I've you know it's quite upsetting it's distressing you know, people go wobbly and weak at the knees and just don't know what the hell to do, you know. Because um, I'm not really into that sort of slightly Hollywood glamorising of violence. I don't like that 
don't like it. No one was ever redeemed through violence and I'm a bit sick of watching it in films and stuff. Um, it's just empty to me. It just doesn't work. And it just has no bear, bearing on real life. And I think that's just that little grain of truth and just makes makes it lose, you know, any meaning to me at all. So he, he's a more realistic, he's, he's like a real kid. And I used to be a teacher. I think I know how kids, uh, <laughs> had over a decade of working with kids, I kind of know how kids react to stress. They, they don't go all brave and resourceful. They get upset and withdrawn. That's what happens. So if you didn't like that bit, sorry, but, you know, it's based in in the real world where I like to be most of the time when I'm not making stuff up. Um, so, but it depends. So, you know, if you're not sure what you're getting and you're happy to go with it, you're happy. But if you think you're getting a certain thing, you know, you you might like bit, some bits and not others, which is interesting. But, you know, everybody has their tastes and it's fair enough. You know, your, your, your opinion is your opinion. And I am pleased if somebody at least reads it all and responds in their own way because that's something I'd, I'd rather that than be ignored. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of a bit of a long riff on that, isn't it? Um, so, but it kind of gives you a potted history because we are trying to talk about a journey and how these things come about. Um, a very common question is people say, where do you get ideas? Your people are always asking writers, where do you get your ideas? And again, when I was teaching that the kids would always ask if ever there was access to a writer and you know where where they get ideas where they get ideas and there's a bit of a I saw a joke somewhere they say oh well I, I get them from the idea store it's you know it's a big store it's got a big sign on the big sign saying idea on on it and you go in and it's there's all this weird furniture and you sort of wander around and that's oh no that's not idea that's Ikea which <laughs> which I quite like Although I'm sure you could get ideas from Ikea. Uh, you just, you know, probably wouldn't be able to fit them in your car afterwards. <laughs> Self-assembly ideas, uh, free with every wardrobe and um, instructions in Swedish. Right, I am going to stop there because there's a little timer up there that says 17 and something minutes. Um, I don't want this to be a promo thing, but I am involved in a promo over the next few days. So I'm just going to mention it 27th to 29th of April because it's not just me. So I don't mind mentioning it. There's a sci-fi and fantasy promo being organized by the self-publishing roundtable. Um, and I'll put a link and it'll appear as if by magic in one of the spaces here because there's when I look last the 27 uh, books. So there's cheat code in there my sort of sci-fi cyberpunk book but which has gone down to 99p in fact it's 99p now or 99 cents if you're in the usa uh, over the next few days and then after the 29th that will go back up to full price and all the other books probably will as well and while you're there i mean don't go today go on the 27th or the 28th or the 29th because there's a giveaway and you can win um a kindle i think a kindle paper white and there's one for the usa and one for the uk so often in the UK, we can't enter these things because the people won't ship, but they've cleverly made two pages, one for the USA, one for the UK. So you can enter freely. And I think there are some other prizes, but I can't see them because it's not live yet. I think, believe there are some gift cards up for Amazon, again, for the correct store, either USA or UK. Um, and even if you're not interested in the giveaway and you think, oh, I can't be bothered with all that, they're just going to try and grab my email address or whatever, which I, I don't know, I'm not running it. It's just my book is in it. Um, then go along and look at the books because they are all within a certain price range. And if you like sci-fi and fantasy, there might be something that just, you know, catches your eye. And if it's a decent price, you know, have a look. Uh, it's always good to find new writers, new books, isn't it? So without that, where would we be? <laughs> we would be undiscovered. So anyway, I will stop there. Um, just quickly mention there's lots of kind of stuff going on as well at the moment. I'm trying to doing this I'm trying to get more on my blog there's coming more on the blog over at the other site I'm involved with which is the collective sci-fi.com if you're into sci-fi we're trying to get more stuff up there so there will be some blog posts up there um, I've just put a massive effort into doing the writing talk podcast I mean I know this podcast is more for readers than writers but if you are interested in kind of writing process I sort of made it better it's a bit longer it's got segments like they should have and little nice jingles and things like that which took me ages so if you're interested in writing um, I'd encourage you to go to writingtalkpodcast.com and if you're interested in sci-fi then the collective sci-fi.com and also there's the sci-fi sale phew going on at the SPRT site uh, you could always just google like self-publishing roundtable and 
can find it from there I should think so I have great urge because I quite like pulling funny faces I urge to do this sort of thing but I'm trying not to I'm trying not to maybe later when we know each other better you know uh, you know give me some chocolates and flowers and perhaps I'll pull some faces for you. <laughs> wear some hats okay <laughs> right um, talk to you next week if not before in the meantime um, enjoy the rest of your onward day as I believe <laughs> people say I hope you enjoy yourself all the time actually and um, take care and I'll talk to you soon goodbye